We'll continue with our base end panel program and we'll add a saw groove for a back panel. So to do that, again, we need to click on the face that uh, we want to program on. And let's make sure that we're at the end of the program. And let's add, let's go to the saw command and we'll add a saw groove. And we've got three different options for this particular machine. Um, one is the most common is the saw and X, which is typically the integrated saw um, on the on the boring head. Uh, some machines do have a saw that runs in X or Y and with a 360 or C axis and an aggregate then we can program a saw to run at any angle. But let's just look at the saw and X as that's the most common saw that most every machine has. So we'll click on the uh, saw and X and it's asking us for X initial and X final. So let's have this saw groove start at uh, 0 and X and have it stop at the right end of the panel and we'll just use the variable L or the parametric variable L to stand for the length of the panel and then let's um, let's put this saw groove 15 millimeters off the back edge of the panel so that's height minus 15 and let's make the groove 7 millimeters deep then we'll come here to tool and we will click this control. If we don't know the tool number, we can go, we can, we, excuse me, if we know the tool number, we can just type it in. If we don't remember it, we can click this control here. And it comes up and it shows us um, any available tool for what we're trying to do. And in this case, there's only one saw on this, on this uh, tool configuration that's available, so it comes right up. And its tool number is 1161. So if we hit select, then it will put this tool number in the program. And incidentally, anytime you use this control to load the tool number automatically, it also brings in the comment for that tool and puts it in the program for you. If you were just to plug in tool 1161, that's fine, that will work, but you won't get the comment from that tool if that matters to you. And then uh, another input we're prompted for that we'll leave blank for now is tool radius compensation. We'll leave that at none for now. Okay, so we get our saw groove, and if we zoom in a bit, then it even shows us, it draws the groove um, with the, the width of the saw blade. And with tool radius compensation, if we don't specify, our choices are none, left, or right. If we keep it at none, then the center of the blade is programmed at our Y coordinate of height minus 15. So that means that the um, this space behind the behind the uh, saw groove is not 15 millimeters but it's 15 less the half the width of the blade so if we're trying to hold 15 millimeters here then we we need to use tool compensation and then the machine will compensate for the width of the blade and move it so that we maintain um, this um, 15 millimeters or whatever it is we've programmed away from the edge so Let's go and, and choose a radius compensation, and we need to know whether we choose left or right. Well, the way we do this is it's based on um, the direction of travel. If we want the blade to remain on away from this open space, if we're trying to maintain 15 millimeters here, if, we, if we're trying to maintain that, then we want the blade to remain below it. And whether we choose left or right is based on the direction of travel. And so we programmed this, if we look here at our x and, and x initial and x final coordinates, we started at 0, which is on the left edge, and we finished here on the right edge. So that means we're traveling from left to right. So if we want our blade to be on this side of that line, then uh, based on this direction of travel of left to right, this is right compensation. Had we traveled the blade from, from the, the right side to the left, then the compensation would be left. But So let's go back and, and plug in right hand compensation. And then to illustrate, to see the difference, let's go over to the 3D view. Let's zoom in up here in the corner a bit. And again, this line is the center of the blade. If we want to see which side we're compensated to, then we come up to, um, to one of the controls here and we click on the one that's display tool radius compensation. So when we turn this on, then the second line shows us which side we're compensated to. If we click on a different command, um, 
then we'll, um, our, our saw um, command will turn blue because it's not the selected operation. I selected this drill, so it's the selected operation. But now our, our saw groove is blue, and when we click on the radius compensation, then we get a different color. So it's easy to tell that we're compensated to the right side or below the, the line we've programmed. And so we know that, um, that the space above what we've programmed will, will hold at 15 millimeters since, we've, since this is what we programmed. We programmed it to be height minus 15. And since we're compensated to the correct side, then we know that we'll have 15 millimeters of material here and then the groove below it. Now had we chosen the incorrect compensation or left, then when we turn on our tool compensation, now we're compensated to the wrong side and we'll have 15 millimeters less the entire width of the blade uh, on this side. So that's, um, we have to understand the, the, the concept of tool compensation because we also use it with routing, which we'll look at in the next video. But um, you have to set tool compensation. Uh, it's always with respect to the direction that the tool is traveling.